My name is Mikey Musumichi. I'm a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I would describe my Jiu-Jitsu as very calculated. My greatest strength would be my ability to observe situations and figure out the right solution. Can you believe it? 12 seconds to win his third world championship gold medal. I don't really care which opponent I'm fighting, you know, it's just, I don't really focus on them. I just focus on doing my Jiu-Jitsu. Fighting against a guy named Marcelo Cohen. My name is Marcelo Cohen. I'm a black belt representing the armor in Jupiter, Florida. My Jiu-Jitsu is pretty old school, basic, efficient. I was looking for submission. If you don't know me, it's because you really don't know about Jiu-Jitsu. High profile fights are a common thing to me. With IBJJF not having worlds and everything, like in America, who's number one has been the biggest event. I see him compete since a little kid, so it's a kind of clash of ages. I know that I'll have some really cool exchanges of positions. Maybe Mike can try pull it out a heel hook and put his name on the no-gi scene. Jiu-Jitsu is Jiu-Jitsu, gi or no-gi. If you want to have the best Jiu-Jitsu, you have to do both. I want to make this fight nasty, I want to make it crazy. I am number one. <laughs> Do I have to say that? Ladies and gentlemen, to our next bout. Out of Jupiter, Florida, competing for the Armory, 2019's IBJJF no key pan champion, Marcelo Cohen! Hailing from Rio de Janeiro, but now fighting out of Jupiter, Florida, Marcelo Cohen, Carlson Gracie, black belt chase. This guy's a scrapper. Yeah, five time combat jiu jitsu veteran, veteran of the game, great Binogi grappler, looking to take it to Mike Musumeci. And now, his opponent to the map from Las Vegas, Nevada, a four time world champion, here is Mikey Musumeci! You heard it, four times world champion, three of those world titles in the Gi, and one of those, no Gi, but this, Mikey Musumeci's first no Gi match since 2016. Can you believe it has been? Man, Guys, man, let's long. try to Over keep on the center as fast as we can. Listen Mikey to what the key. Look at this, a 13 year age difference, otherwise physically closely matched in both height and weight. And as you can see the rankings, Marcelo Cohen, number 10, Mikey, this is his opportunity to make a name for himself hey. in the band of weight rankings, Chase. You know, people may be wondering why he's not on the rankings, but hey, you have to be active to be ranked. Yeah, it's been a long time, nearly five years, and this is the moment everyone's been waiting for. How does Mikey adapt to the latest and greatest in no-gi grappling? I mean, that is the biggest question, is literally we do not know what to expect because the Mikey of 2016 has got to be different to the Mikey of 2021. He's got to have changed, he's got to have evolved and know what new techniques is he going to show here tonight at who's number one. But it's not that simple because you've got Marcelo Cohen trying to rip your arm off. <laughs> yeah, Mikey was adamant in his interviews leading up to this event that good jiu-jitsu is good jiu-jitsu. It transforms through any sort of format, whether it's gi, no gi, submission only, etc. And he's here to prove that tonight. You know, I think it's significant to note as well. I mean, not only is the energy of Marcelo Cohen, you can tell there's just a little bit of venom behind those movements, a little bit of diving toehold there. But, you know, man, I just feel like he's amped up. You can just look, there's a fire in his eyes, and he knows that going up against somebody like Mikey, of course he's going to be the underdog, but that shouldn't mean that he should go out there and not just put it all on the line. Absolutely. You know, Marcelo definitely came into this match feeling a little bit overlooked and uh, has something to prove. Keep an eye out for uh, an amazing Kimura attack. He likes to dive and roll on those, as well as hunt for the legs. And you mentioned as well, Chase, that of course, a five-time combat jiu-jitsu veteran. You know, that is, for people who aren't uh, necessarily aware, it is basically jiu-jitsu where you're allowed to slap your opponent. And now, we saw him in action in, in, in Mexico at the combat jiu-jitsu worlds in the, that uh, tournament there just very recently where, let's be honest, he slapped the crap out of his opponent, man. He likes to be nasty. And he said that. He said he wants to be physical. He said he wants to make it one of those kind of matches, you know, where you really make your opponent suffer. I kind of feel like we're seeing that now. Look at this. Well, like he's no stranger to adversity. If you saw him, oh, here we go, Mikey, in on possibly a back attack. It's hard to see exactly what's going on with his hands. Maybe he's going to change to a foot lock of sorts, but anyways, Mikey is well adept to taking some punishment and loves a challenge. Yeah, going for that ankle lock control. I mean, Mikey, he used the good old-fashioned straight ankle lock 
to win the world title, his most recent, his third IBJJF world title, in a grand total of 12 seconds. One of the fastest recorded submissions in an IBJJF championship final. And now, using that grip to come up on top and into this leg weave position, will we see him play some top game here? Will we see him pass the guard and look to establish top position? Or do you think he's going to go for the back? I don't know. I'm, li I'm liking the action we're seeing at hand. It's really crushing Marcelo's hips. A lot of pressure from Mikey on top as he also pulls up on the head and neck, creating it difficult for Marcelo to really go anywhere. And Mikey's weighing on him at this point. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful leg work there. Mikey stepping over to the other side now, but into a so flow craft position. Goes back to the other direction. And the, the pressure, the upper body control, you can see the grip behind the neck now. Going to that good old-fashioned underhook cross face. Really... Big pressure as he just steps over the guard into the mount. And early in the match, man, for a small guy, 135 pounder, looks like that's some big pressure. Yeah, Mikey has some serious technique behind his movements. Again, mount is not necessarily the most common position we see in Nogi, and, and uh, Mikey transitions off now. Kind of, he's back in the, like a quarter guard, but he'll probably pass uh, pretty quickly here if he should want to. I think that's one of the biggest things to watch with Mikey Musumeci is it's not just what his upper body is doing, but what his legs are doing. Because he's one of those grapplers, it's like, you know, he uses his four limbs simultaneously. His legs are like hands. And you can learn so much from what he, what he does with his foot placement. Right? I like how he's pummeling uh, very easily on either leg right now. I'm not quite sure what he's looking for, but he's very committed to this underhook and driving in and putting so much pressure right now on Marcelo Cohen. Yeah, he's got his opponent stapled, just absolutely flat on the mat. Both shoulders flattened out, got that good underhook cross face. And the leg work really is key because, of course, yeah, you know, Marcelo can fight. Marcelo can try and recover guard, but he's not going anywhere. He can't frame away. He needs to make space or he needs to turn. But, of course, Mikey wants that. Mikey wants him to turn. And this is a frustrating position to be um, if you're Marcelo on bottom. He hasn't been able to get really anywhere, and Mikey is just crushing him. Um, but there's still plenty of time left. You know, we have to, over 10 minutes left. Uh, I want to see. Marcelo really hasn't worked too hard to bridge or move. He's just being very defensive, which I think is smart. I think very interesting that Mikey has absolutely no problem in allowing himself to be put back into this shallow half guard, really a, a half guard where the, 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 the legs are just trapping the, la at the ankle because he just slips that hook right out and he's going, he's switching up from knee right to side control. It, it feels like he's just cooking his opponent. Yeah, yeah they, Mike is clearly looking for a certain reaction that he hasn't found yet. But uh, I'm wondering maybe if he's trying to transition to the back at this point or if he's looking for maybe an arm triangle. I'm not quite sure where Mikey's looking to go, but he's definitely moving at will in and out of this quarter guard, half guard that Marcelo has. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there. I think that he is baiting a reaction. He's, he wants Marcelo to do something specific, and that's going to open up a big attack here because otherwise, why hang out here and why change your leg position so much unless there's a strategy at play, right? You know, he's not scoring any points, you know? If this was IBGGF, he'd probably be up like about 30 points right now because he's passed the guard so many times. But, of course, this is a submission-only rule set. No points. The judges, though, are looking at the whole match. And this, regardless of whether his foot is in the half guard or not, this is a positional control. Right, and this actually speaks maybe to the to veteran um, position that Marcelo holds. Is He's not getting flustered here. He knows right. that Mikey wants something else, and he's not giving it to him. Um, Mikey may be forced to change tact sh shortly here, but we still have plenty of time. So, Well, this is a little bit different. You see Mikey going a little bit higher now, creating some elbow separation with that trapped arm. Could open up the opportunity of an arm triangle choke if he can get that arm or the elbow far enough away from the body. One of the most uh, high percentage nogi chokes that you can hope for. But I mean, just that pressure there, just really giving Cohen absolutely no opportunity whatsoever to bridge, to roll, to frame, to make space, or to recover any kind of guard. Yeah, it's definitely been one-way traffic throughout this entire match here. And again, you can see Mikey's hands clasped underneath. And now he's switched to the neck. Just looks so uncomfortable is what I'm trying to <laughs> convey here. And that shoulder pressure, it's, it's huge, isn't it? You know, you can see the way that, that Mikey, you know, he's, he's let up a little bit now. He's kind of cupping behind the head. But every time he puts it down, you know, it, you can see Marcelo's face is changing color. The pressure is so high. Originally hailing from New Jersey, of course, Mikey Musumeci is, uh, you know, he's bounced around a lot in his career as his family have moved around. He you know, spent his formative years in Florida training there also and now resident in Las Vegas, one of his... Main training partners, of course, his sister, Tammy Musumeci. And 
He's been training, can you believe it, for 20 years. He started training when he was only four years of age. And a great story if you watch our documentary about how he used to drill his moves on a big stuffed animal. <laughs> That's fantastic. Amazing start. Yeah, I was chatting with Mikey ahead of this event, and one thing that he said uh, was that the quarantine was very difficult. About him and Tammy just drilled nonstop throughout that period, and he said his jiu-jitsu got even better somehow. I mean, I, if you want to be stuck in a house alone, then who better to be stuck with than your sister, who is a, a fellow black belt world champion, right? Because it's somebody you can train with absolutely every single day, and I feel that. Uh, you know this 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 opportunity for, to, for for Mikey to to spend that time in the laboratory to spend that time in the gym working on techniques that she other that he would otherwise wouldn't necessarily develop. I, I think that that is time well spent. And here we go, mounted triangle, mounted triangle. This drops off to the side and he gets the tap. Triangle armbar for Mikey Musumichi. Just needs one opportunity and it's done. So patient. Amazing strategy there. You called it, Chase. He said he was definitely setting up. He was baiting a very specific reaction, and there it was. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Mikey Musumechi. Absolutely clinical finish there from Mikey Musumechi in his first no-gi match since 2016. A submission win here. Who's number one? Let's take a look at some of the best moments from that match because that was uh, that was a clinical performance, Chase. I think that's the best way to describe that. Yeah, it was all Mikey the whole time. And once he got on top, he never went one step backwards. Incredible domination there of the mount and also going in and out of half guard at will. Really dominant performance. And again, Mikey had a, a goal. He had an end point that he was looking to hit this entire match and he waited until he found it and stepped over here into this triangle, turned it into an armbar. What a finish. Yeah, absolutely clinical. I gotta say that was a, uh, a, a, a supreme display of technique and that triangle armbar was razor sharp. Mikey, man, I feel like you had an idea and oh, you know, a very I, clear idea I, of what you wanted and you were working towards that the whole time, right? Yeah, um, I was just trying to see what I could get open up, you know. Um, it was a little different than the Yi because he felt like way more slippery, you know, but like besides that, it was just the same, you know. That is the big question, isn't it? You know, this is your first time back competing in no Gi since 2016. That is a long time. How did it feel? Uh, it was super fun, you know, um, Jiu Jitsu is Jiu Jitsu, right? So everyone, Jiu Jitsu and the Gi, no Gi, it's the same to me. Well, tell me what brought you back, Mikey. That's the big question as well. You know, um, we've seen you compete so much the last four years. You know, you won three IBJJF world titles in a row. And then, you know, you, you had last year, of course, 2020 was one of those years where your career was kind yeah. of up and down because, you know, the long enforced layoff. What brought you back to Nogi? Uh, basically, uh, I lose motivation sometimes once you win all the titles you have in the Gi, you know. So um, I was um, thinking about going to law school and um, starting to do Jiu-Jitsu more as a hobby. But then um, thinking about uh, filming DVDs, training Nogi, like, give me a new fire, you know? Is it bad of me to say that I'm glad you didn't go to law school? <laughs> you know, come on, that would be jujitsu's loss, and nobody wants to see Mikey retire at such a young age. 24 years of age, four-time world champion, victorious here at Who's Number One. I want to know, what's next for you? Oh, uh, what's next for me is just to go back home tomorrow and train. I'll probably train again tonight. I'll go back home tomorrow and train, get better, and then the next challenge. Well, we look forward to seeing it and very hopeful it'll be here on the Who's Number One mat once again. Mikey, thank any so messages much. before you get out of here? Uh, I just want to thank everyone that helped me for this camp in New Jersey and Philly, Danny, Nick, uh, Chris Nonan, my friend Renee in Vegas, all the people in my garage, uh, everyone that supports me. I really appreciate them. Thank you guys so much. I'm awesome. so grateful for you guys. Man, it's been great to have you here. Thanks so much, Mikey. Thank you. Man, Chase, 